What's up, everybody, and welcome back to Calvin McClure's RP1 playthrough on Kerbal Space Program 181. I'm your host, Calvin McClure. We begin with something very important, which is this, the unlocking of the space plane wings. That was the last set of items that we needed to pursue the next phase of our X-Plane program. But before we begin with that, we produce this, which is Surya 1. Surya 1 is going to be, if all goes well, the first solar-powered satellite in our program. So what we're doing here is exactly that. We're incorporating what we need, and we've added, if you'll notice on top, a small payload fairing to our Silver Brand ORB. The X-15 was certainly a very truly remarkable vehicle and definitely one of the more noteworthy accomplishments technologically speaking of the 1950s and the 1960s and even through today still has some very impressive and unbeaten records. Born in the late 1950s out of the necessity to know what high speed flight and high-speed re-entry at hypersonic speeds, so Mach numbers exceeding Mach 5, would do to various materials. The X-15 was a joint program between NASA and the United States Air Force. There were two major versions of the craft produced. One had twin XLR-11 engines and one had the single big motor, the XLR-99, which produced the power required to uh, allow the X-15 to achieve the high speed and high altitude flights it was designed to do. The program was split up into two major flight types, uh, high altitude flights, which would eventually reach the Kármán line, and high speed flights, which would focus on lower altitudes, but those high Mach number values were pursued in those ones. Flight 1 occurred on June 8th, 1959. One of the more peculiar things that the X-15 did before landing was it would have that ventral fin that would be jettisoned and parachuted to the ground where it was recovered and eventually reused and reflown again. However, only 26 flights were performed with that ventral fin. Wind tunnel testing would subsequently reveal as well as actual flight data that the ventral fin was simply redundant and unnecessary. And therefore, for the most of the flights, it was not reused. The X-15 was predominantly used for high Mach number speed research specifically testing various materials and alloys and their abilities to withstand the extreme heat produced at high Mach numbers. Various portions of the aircraft on the leading edges and flat surfaces would be coated with various materials, allowing engineers to evaluate how each performed. A later version of the X-15 would see the incorporation of drop tanks on the plane allowing it to reach those incredible speeds and heights. The highest it ever did fly was 108 kilometers and the fastest speed reached was 7,270 kilometers. In total, 12 pilots would fly the aircraft, including one Neil Armstrong. A total of three X-15s were built and performed a total of 199 flights. There was one fatal accident and one near-fatal accident with pilot Peter McKay.
In actuality, in regards to speed, RXSB-3D has already beaten and slightly exceeded the X15's top speed when we hit that 2100 meter per second speed. So it'll be interesting to see if our X15 is capable speed-wise of exceeding the performance of the 3D. Finally, we arrive to the ultimate flight of the XSP-3D. This is the final flight of the 3D. The target for this flight was to hit 700 meters per second at an altitude of about 20 kilometers, which is something we had done before. So as soon as we finished doing that, we simply gunned the engines and ran at top speed for one final time. Since this was the last flight, I decided to be a bit more aggressive and have fun and ended up actually tearing off our air brakes. So we did something we did way back at the very start of the X-Plane program, which is just perform hard left and right bankings to bleed off that excess speed. So we did that without a hitch. And for the last time, the 3D came in for a landing. Back on the pad sits the Silverbrand ORB with what should be the first polar orbit in this program. Everything on the flight was progressing nicely, including a very dramatic second stage separation. And then we started having this oscillation and I have no idea what caused it, but it ended up costing us quite a lot of Delta V. And as a result, we just fell short of orbit. With the polar orbit contract deadline fast approaching, I decided to take what was supposed to be the first solar powered satellite flight and refurbish that one, or rather repurpose it for the polar attempt. So this was polar attempt launch number two. And so with that successful burn of the third stage, we finally reach orbit on the very first polar satellite. 
Unfortunately, we did not meet the 300 kilometer perigee value requirement to have the first solar powered satellite. So we went back to the VAB and produced another slightly different one with a small booster kick stage that could allow us to get that extra height once we're at Apogee. Finally, we make it to the maiden flight of the X-15. We had a bit of a hard time, I'm not sure why, in getting the main engine to start. Both SRMs are there to ensure that we don't have any haulage issues, but for some reason the engine did not light. But eventually we got it to go, we got a full burn out of it, and we reach the Carmen line, which was the main objective of this flight. Once at Apogee, it was time to prepare for re-entry. The best way to do this was to simply have a nose-down attitude where we would, like a dark, pierce through the atmosphere at high speed. Overall, she proved fairly responsive, although slightly twitchy at times. A little tricky to fly, but certainly more than capable of handling what it was thrown at. What you're seeing here is actual NASA footage of an X-15 flight when the ventral fin was jettisoned. You can see it being jettisoned with the parachute deploying. I decided to similarly model that on ours as well, just for the heck of it. So we had a really nice deployment of the ventral fin, but for some reason the parachute failed to deploy. She proved to be somewhat trickier to fly on approach and at low speeds compared to what we had before and we ended up doing some damage to the port side elevon including the engine when we came in for what was a rather fast landing We eventually did come to a stop and you can see the extent of the damage at the rear. So some amount of reconstruction will be necessary for the next flight. But ultimately in the end, we did reach the Carmen line, which was the objective of the flight. And Dennis becomes the very first of our pilots to get his astronaut wings. The next set of orbital contracts is proving to be perhaps just slightly outside of the capacity of our silver brand ORB. We'll have to wait and see how that kick stage powered solar satellite performs. That just might be the key into getting into a more specific orbit. But for that, we'll have to wait till the next episode. Thank you all so much for watching. I really appreciate you stopping by. I hope you enjoyed it. I really enjoy making these, so I hope they make your day a little brighter. If you like what you see, please do like and subscribe. It always helps to keep the channel going. If you want to stay in touch with the show, you can find me on Twitter and Reddit as well. Until next time, see you.
on the next flight. <laughs>